I would like to welcome you all to the awarding ceremony and launch of the loss of the AFC Volume 4 and reissue of Volume 1 virtually live for the first time. Today, we are going to honor and acknowledge our specialists, authors, editors, and publishers. And as we celebrate the fourth publication and the first reissue of Volume 5, launched five years ago. Here are some important housekeeping guidelines. And now I would like to request Ms. Alia al -Zaruni, Executive Vice President Operations of DFC Authority for the opening remarks. In a similar way to the famous Hellsbury Laws of England, the, th the series are designed to ensure those who are familiar with other common law jurisdictions, but not the DIFC, can quickly establish where they can rely on their existing understanding of the common law. It also helps those who regularly work in the DIFC have easy access to the latest legal position. Due to the major legislative refresh the DIFC has gone through in the past few years, it was necessary to update Volume 1, and we've had accredited DIFC Academy specialist firms that have significant experience in litigation and providing advice in the DIFC rewrite six titles within this volume, which covers arbitration law, employment law, damages and remedies law, obligations law, and court law. It was, it was also important to issue a new volume to cover the laws that were not covered before and the new laws that were enacted by the DIFC, such as insolvency law, netting law, security law, operating law, leasing law, and the IP law. We are very proud of this great achievement during such challenging times. This project was actually started back in March 2020 um, during uh, times when countries were actually going into lockdowns with so much uncertainty on what's next. This achievement, of course, would have not been possible without the great dedication and efforts of our specialist firms, authors, editors, and our publisher as well. Special thanks to all the participating law firms, Clyde & Co, Jones Day, Stevens & Harwood, Clever Chance, Atamimi, The Outer Temple Chambers, Simmons & Simmons, and Baker Botts, and I hope I didn't miss anyone. I would also like to thank our editorial board members, Jacques Visser, Editor-in-Chief, David Russell QC, Executive Editor, Aisha Kelban, Lori Baker, and Tenuja Parmesivan for great dedication and efforts. And finally, our publisher, LexisNexis. Special thanks to Claire, Hussein Hadi, and Sarah Haddati. So uh, from or on behalf of the DIFC Academy and to all of you, please accept my sincere gratitude and appreciation for the amazing work you have done and supporting the DIFC Academy with this great initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Alia. And now may I request our Editor-in-Chief, Jacques Visser, Chief Legal Officer of DIFC Authority, to give us an overview of the laws of DIFC commentaries. Um, good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you, Stella and Alia. Um, and once again, also a warm welcome from my side uh, to this launch event today. Um, to put uh, these volumes and the commentaries on the DIFC laws into context, um, there's a, a very valuable quote from our previous Chief Justice, uh, Justice Michael Wang, who said that um, we cannot really claim that the DIFC is a fully fledged commercial law infrastructure merely as a consequence of, of the laws that we've put in place and, and the courts that we have in the DIFC to interpret those laws. He said that the picture is only complete, as is the case in other developed jurisdictions. Once there is, a, there is detailed information available to anyone who's interested in our laws, the primary reason being that any mature legal jurisdiction requires thoughtful research and detailed analysis of its laws. For judges, legal practitioners, and academics seeking guidance as part of that beautiful process in common law of creating new law. It's also essential uh, to build a body of law in a jurisdiction to create legal certainty in that jurisdiction. As was the case with the previous volumes uh, 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 of the laws of the DIC, the, the commentaries contained in the volumes released for uh, publication today were obviously prepared by leading practitioners. 
my role today is the editor in chief is just to give a little bit of uh, more special thanks in, in terms of the roles that everyone has played. Now, uh, Ali has thanked the, the authors and the firms involved, but you have to understand the amount of time and effort, research and attention to detail that has gone into this and how remarkable that is. Often as legal practitioners, we go to a specific part of a law in a, in a textbook or, or uh, in, in you know, terms of case law references to it, and we read up on it in that context. And the commentaries are obviously very useful in that regard. But you only realize the size of the effort when you sit down and read through these manuscripts from an editorial perspective, line by line, with a ruler, not to miss anything, that you realize the extent of the efforts that have been put in. So thank you very much to that for that for each of the firms and, and authors involved. Now, Ali and Maristella, uh, in, in the context of the DIFC Academy and the Academy of Law. Uh, you know, we see them at the back of all of this, but once again, you have no idea, especially during the, the COVID lockdown, lockdown, how essential their contributions were. We, we now, I think this is the first time that the, these uh, volumes have come out where the Academy of Law has moved under into the umbrella of the DIFC Academy. And I think if the way that, that that has worked together, I think it's gone incredibly well and it bodes well for the future. Also, uh, Alia mentioned uh, the guys from LexisNexis. I think from an editorial perspective, we have to single out uh, the ceaseless pressure and incredible turnaround times uh, that were put on to us by Claire from LexisNexis. And I, and I think it's fair to say that we would not have been here today had it not been for Claire's relentless drive to get these things done. Last but not least, also want to thank uh, the work of the other members of the editorial staff. In that context, specifically also David Russell QC uh, in his capacity as executive editor. David has a wealth of experience in this regard uh, and I rely on him um, heavily, not, not just in the context of this, but on a much broader basis. And the same for the other members of the editorial board. Thank you for all of your efforts. We at the DIFC Authority, uh, as the primary administrators and caretakers of legislation in the DIFC, continue with our process of updating the legislative framework in the DIFC, and which most recently saw uh, the new IP law, and if, if you go to our website, you will now also see amendments to employment law, employment regulations, um, undergoing uh, public consultation, as well as proposed amendments to the data protection law and insolvency regulations, and I think uh, new intellectual property regulations will follow suit in the near future. Now, all of, with all of this legislative activity that give rise to reissues, uh, of these volumes over time, um, I have to tell you, and as I've said in the past, we are reticent legislators. We, we truly believe that settled laws with uh, a developed legal precedent uh, pertaining thereto and building out the commentaries and the guidance around those laws are what ultimately will assist us in creating legal system, uh, certainty in the DIFC. But we also have to uh, do this careful balance between uh, that reticence and, and being an active and dynamic commercial jurisdiction that wishes to operate in, in a context that is uh, in, within the parameters of global best practice and the cutting edge in the era of fast moving technology and innovation, which is always the requirement if you live in a fast moving city like Dubai. This is never easy, but it is something that we take very seriously to ensure that the DIFC remains at the top of the pile in terms of the common law jurisdictions in the region. Once again, many thanks also from my side uh, for attending today. And once again, thank you everyone who aided in this project for their value, valuable contribution. Thank you. Thank you, Jacques. And now let's hear from our executive editor, David Russell Cusey, barrister of Alter Temple Chambers, for his welcome address.
The only comment that I think it's important to add to the ones that have already been made and the thanks that, that Jacques has given um, to our publisher and to the contributors is that this is a peer-reviewed journal. Uh, although we've congratulated the authors, in the case of every article, uh, it is reviewed by an independent uh, member of the editorial board so that um, it, the, the reader can be confident that we are giving not just individual opinions, but a considered opinion and having been both a victim of the process and uh, on, being on the other side, I know how rigorous it is. Um, it is a very important part of the process. Um, those involved who do the work of reviewing spend uh, certainly not as much time as the authors, but in many cases, a very considerable amount of time. It's yet again uh, an imposition on the authors who from time to time have to defend the conclusions they've made. But it does make one a lot conf more confident of the process and the result. And I've had that experience myself um, when one of the uh, articles I've written has been challenged and to know that uh, that it's not just my opinion, but that it's been peer reviewed uh, has given me a lot of confidence. And I think, and by the way, we don't tell people who their peer reviewers are. So uh, it's an extra element of rigor added to the process that I think is, is worth bringing to everyone's attention. Beyond that, uh, everything that has to be said, I think has been said, but that is, I think, an important addition. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, David. Thank you for that. We would also like to call on our esteemed partner and publisher, Hussein Hadi, head of publishing of LexisNexis Middle East. Thank you very much. Uh, my sincere thanks to Ali Al Zaruni, Executive Vice President of Operations, the DFC Authority, Jack Visser, Chief Legal Officer of the DFC Authority, and all the teams at the DFC Academy and the DFC Courts. On behalf of LexisNexis, it is my pleasure to launch the latest books in the DIFC Law Collection, which is the result of an enduring five-year partnership. The DIFC Law Book series was inspired by Halsbury's Laws of England, which is the definitive and only narrative statement of the Law of England and Wales. In, in 1907, Stanley Shaw Bond, editor at Butterworths, began a project to produce a complete statement of the Law of England and Wales that was authoritative, comprehensive and up to date. At the time, Bond tracked down the former Lord Chancellor, the Earl of Halsbury on holiday in Nice to invite him to be the editor in chief of the laws of England. So this is a combination of over a hundred years of experience. Halsbury's laws are written by, in consultation with leading lawyers, both practitioners and academics, ensuring the highest quality and dependability. The DIFC law book series is published in the same spirit. It draws on a formidable pool of authors and contributors who have been part of the evolving story of the DIFC courts. On behalf of LexisNexis, I really want to thank all our authors, and we greatly appreciate the time taken to share their experience and expertise. It's fair to say that none of our authors are going to be uh, buying yachts with royalty checks as a result of their contributions. They do this out of a genuine passion for articulating the law and sharing their, their expertise, and we really appreciate it. So as part of the project initiated by the then uh, DIFC Chief Justice Michael Huang, the, law of the, the laws of the DIFC was launched to provide a narrative statement, uh, a complete uh, statement of the laws of the DIFC on a subject by subject basis. And this is gonna continue to evolve. Uh, we have expectations that we will expand this into other volumes, and that's already under discussion. I also want to congratulate the DIFC courts on continuing their mission uh, of furthering best practice and helping to bridge the gap between civil law and common law. We know for a fact, of course, that the, according to the statistics from the Legal Affairs of Dubai, over half of the legal consultants practicing in Dubai come from common law jurisdictions. And I want to quote uh, the DIFC Chief Justice Zaki Azmi who said recently that the DIFC courts has further achieved a new milestone by appointing the next generation of Emirati judges with trans-systemic expertise across civil and common law. 
Um, and I want to congratulate them in particular on appointing the first uh, female judge uh, at the, uh, in, in a common law court uh, who is an Emirati national. And uh, I want to congratulate the DFC court for continuing to be so progressive and an inspiration and a leader in the region. So with that, I just want to thank uh, the DFC for an enduring partnership uh, and thank all our authors for being involved and to emphasize that this will be a continuing project and we invite other authors and anyone else who's interested in being part of the story to join us in this enduring legacy. So thank you very much and congratulations to everyone involved. Thank you, Hussein. So now for the awarding of authors and specialists, um, DIFC would like to acknowledge the contributions of the authors from various law firms and chambers. We will start with volume one reissue and then followed by the new volume four. So the contributing law firms or chambers will be formally recognized as DIFC Academy specialists. So for volume one reissue, Please let me call on Clyde and Co, DIFC Academy Specialists in DIFC Arbitration Law. We would like to acknowledge the following authors. Nasif Bumalhab, Nicholas Berganza, and Muhammad Mahmoud. Moving along, Jones Day, DIFC Academy Specialists in Companies Law. We would like to acknowledge the following authors. Daniel Partovi, Farshid Abdul Rahman. We'd also like to acknowledge Stevenson Harwood, DSC Academy Specialists in Employment Law. We would like to acknowledge the following authors. Kirsten Lucas, Emily Aryati, and Edward Camp. Then we have Clifford Chance, DFC Academy Specialists in DFC Obligations Law. And we would like to acknowledge the following authors. Arun Ves Wesaran, Bethany Lightly Hunt, Victoria Santa Moore, and Lana Ristic. And then we have Clyde and Co. once again as DIFC Academy Specialists in DIFC Damages and Remedies Law. And we would like to acknowledge the following authors, Kip Hutchison and Alexandra Lester. And finally, Aisha Karim, DIFC Academy Specialist in DIFC Court Law. Congratulations, everyone. And now moving along to volume four. So we have the commentaries on operating, leasing, intellectual property, insolvency, netting, and security laws. Outer Temple Chambers, as a DIFC Academy Specialist in DIFC Operating Law, we would like to acknowledge the following authors. David Russell, QC, and Andrew Maguire. And our DIFC Academy Specialists in DIFC Leasing Law is Clyde & Co. And we would like to acknowledge the following authors, Alexis Waller and Sarit Thomas. Moving along, we have Alta Mimi & Co, DIFC Academy Specialists, in DIFC Intellectual Property Law. And we would like to acknowledge the following authors, Omar Obidat, Rasha Al Arda, and we have Simmons and Simon, DIFC Academy Specialists in DIFC Insolvency Law. There are actually two firms uh, who wrote this law. So Simon, Simmons and Simon represented by Peter Manning. And the second law firm is Baker Bot, also our DFC Academy Specialists in DFC Insolvency Law. And we would like to acknowledge Philip Ponwar and Dustin Appel.
GIFC Academy Academy Specialist in GIFC Netting Law is Clifford Chance, and we would like to acknowledge the following authors. Habib Mutani. And finally, Al Tamimi and Co, GIFC Academy Specialists in GIFC Security Law. And we would like to acknowledge the following authors. Mark Brown, Arina Gidwani, and Amardeep Shoker. And now for the awarding of the certificates for the editors and publishers. We would like to we would like to recognize the great contributions of JFC Academy editorial board. This year we have expanded members of the editorial board to include representatives from JFC courts and outer temple chambers to add relevant perspectives and strength of the team. So we would like to call on Jacques Visser, who is also our editor in chief, chief legal officer of JFC Authority. David Russell QC, executive editor, barrister of Alter Temple Chambers. Aisha bin Kalban, editor, deputy register of JFC Courts. Lori Baker, editor. Vice President Legal and Director of Data Protection, TFC Authority, and Tanuja Paramathivan, Editor and Senior Vice President, Legal of DIFC Authority. Thank you very much. And of course, to our esteemed partner, publisher, LexisNexis Middle East, for your outstanding efforts in publishing two volumes in these very challenging times. We would like to call on Hossein Hadi and Claire Melvin. So congratulations once again to our talented authors, designated specialists, and highly committed editors for your valuable contributions to the development of DIFC jurisprudence and the DIFC legal system. Please be reminded that the commentaries books are available online in LexisNexis website. And thank you so much, everyone, for your time today. And we will see you shortly at the live webinars, which will be happening at 10 a.m. sharp. So we have session one, GIFC insolvency, security and netting laws. And simultaneously happening is session two, which is uh, GIFC companies and operating laws. Thank you so much and have a great day, everyone.